The Portuguese water dog is a fairly recent arrival on the American purebred scene. But few breeds can claim such a long history of association with man. It is thought that this sturdy, remarkably intelligent dog's ancestors stepped into recorded history from the harsh, forbidding terrain of the Asian tundra. Arriving in the Mediterranean, these dogs found their home among the craggy seaside cliffs of Portugal. They were adopted by the fishing crews and were used to herd fish into nets, retrieve lost tackle, and carry messages from ship to shore. The Portuguese water dog plied his trade until the 20th century, when modern fishing methods severely curtailed his usefulness. As a result, the number of Portuguese water dogs declined radically until there were only a handful of dogs left. In 1968, the first dogs were exported from Portugal to America. The Portuguese water dog was admitted to the AKC stud book in 1983. It is therefore a relative newcomer. The many dogs representing the breed in this presentation will help you recognize correct type and assist you in the judging of the Portuguese water dog. Now, let's begin. In general appearance, the Portuguese water dog is a well-balanced dog of medium build, slightly longer in body than he is tall. His work as a swimmer gives him a muscular, robust appearance. The breed is shown in a natural stance, like this, with the forelegs slightly ahead of the shoulders. The breed is shown in either of two clips, this working retriever clip, or the lion clip seen here. The Portuguese water dog's head is an extremely important component of your evaluation. Hands-on examination of the head is essential. The head should be well proportioned, strong, and wide. Seen in profile, the skull is slightly longer than the muzzle. There is a well-defined stop. The muzzle tapers slightly from base to nose. The slight curve of the skull is more accentuated at the back than at the front. There should be a pronounced occiput. From the front, you can see that the top skull appears somewhat domed and has a slight depression in the middle. There is a prominent forehead marked by a central furrow. This dog's head would be considered undesirable. Why? The muzzle is too long. Remember that the muzzle should be shorter than the skull and broader at the base than at the nose. And here's a dog who appears down-faced. In addition, there is not enough strength or depth of muzzle. Here, we see a top skull that's too flat. There is insufficient stop also. A correct head like this would have a somewhat domed top skull with a well-defined stop and broad square muzzle. Remember, use your hands to evaluate the head. You should feel for the stop, the central furrow, the curved back skull, and the overall proportions of muzzle to skull. These four key features should be present in the correct head. The nose is wide. The nostrils should be well flared and finely pigmented black in animals with black, black and white, or white coats. In brown dogs, the nose is the same color as the coat. Any other color nose is unacceptable. Remember that the nose should be rather broad in appearance, not pointed or pinched. The eyes are medium in size, set well apart, somewhat round in shape, not prominent nor sunken, with a uniquely attentive expression. The eye color should be brown or black. This dog's eyes are too light. Although these eyes are the proper color and shape, they are placed too far apart. 
ears are thin in texture and except for a small opening at the back are held close to the head. They are set on well above the line of the eye like this and the leather is heart shaped. The tip of the ears should not reach below the jawline. Be sure to determine correct ear structure and placement with your hands like this. The bite can be either scissors, like this, or level, like this. The canines are strongly developed. The teeth should never be visible when the mouth is closed. This undershot jaw is incorrect and should be penalized, as should an overshot jaw. The lips are thick, especially in front with no pendulous flu. The inside of the mouth, including the gums, are well ticked with black, or quite black, in black or white dogs. In brown dogs, they are the same as the coat. This dog's lips are too loose and lack the pigmentation required by the standard. Now let's examine the Portuguese water dog's neck and body. The neck is straight and rather short like this. It should be well muscled, nicely rounded and held high. There is no mane and no dewlap. This dog's neck, however, is too short. This neck is properly held and of correct length. The ribs should be well sprung and long. See how the brisket reaches down to the elbow. Lack of this depth is to be seriously penalized. From the front, note the depth of chest and the strong, straight forelegs. Proper width and depth of chest allows for ample lung capacity so necessary for this breed's work. The correct front assembly is marked by strong muscling and substantial bone. The shoulders are well inclined with the upper arm angled back. The forearms are long and strongly muscled. This dog is very straight in shoulder and upper arm. Here is the correct front assembly. Note the well-inclined shoulders, strong upper arms, and straight, well-boned legs. The carpus or wrist joint is heavily boned and appears wider from the front than from the side. The feet are round and rather flat, with toes not too knuckled up and not too long. Central pads should be very thick. One feature of this breed's feet is the webbing between the toes. This is soft skin and is well covered with hair. Black nails are preferred, but white, brown, and striped are allowed according to the color of the coat. The nails are held up slightly off the ground. The Portuguese water dog should appear to be slightly longer in body than he is tall. The back should be relatively short with a slight arch over the loin, not detracting from the desired level top line. It should meet the croup smoothly. The croup is well formed and only slightly inclined, with the hip bones hardly apparent. The underline is characterized by a good tuck up. This dog is too short in back, appearing almost taller than he is long. This is undesirable. This dog is too long in back and short in leg. Here is a well-balanced dog of proper proportions. The Portuguese water dog's distinctive tail is thick at the base and tapers. Because the tail serves as a rudder when the dog is in the water, it is never docked. The length of the tail 
should be such that it does not reach down below the hock. The attentive dog's tail is to be held up in a ring like this, but should not reach beyond the forward line of the hips. The hindquarters are marked by strongly muscled thighs, critical for the dog's work. The second thigh is long and decidedly inclined from front to back. When viewed from the rear, see how the hind legs are parallel from hip to hock joint. The hocks themselves are strong to provide the push when jumping into the water. Note that while dew claws may be removed from the front legs, they must be removed from the rear legs. This dog is much too straight in stifle, and there is no hock definition. It lacks the proper muscling for swimming. And this dog has too much angulation in the rear for his front. He is out of balance. This bitch is correctly balanced. Her powerful, well-muscled thighs ensure plenty of stamina for hours of hard work. Now let's discuss the coat. There are two varieties of coat in this breed. An example of the curly coat is on the left. An example of the wavy coat is on the right. In both coats, the hair should be thick. It is somewhat less dense where the forearm meets the brisket and at the groin. There is no undercoat, nor any sign of a mane or ruff. Here is one example of a correct wavy coat. You can see that the coat is rather loose and has a sheen or luster. It must be noted that the hair is upright on the top of the head. This is not a correct wavy coat. It is too straight. Here is a correct wavy coat. Notice the characteristic sheen and wave. This is the correct curly coat. The curly hair forms compact cylindrical curls like these. Most curly coats do not have a sheen. Notice that the hair on the ears is not curled as tightly as on the rest of the dog. Here is another example of a proper curly coat. As mentioned earlier, there are two acceptable clips for the Portuguese water dog. Here's one of them, the lion clip. You can see that the hindquarters and muzzle are clippered. The coat is left longer on the rest of the head and the body to a point midway between the forechest and the ischium. The hair at the end of the tail is left at full length. The rest of the tail is clippered. This is an improperly groomed lion clip. The line between the long and clippered hair is too far back on the body. Remember that in the correct lion clip, the hair is left long to a point midway between the sternum and the ischium. The second type of clip is this working retriever clip. In order to give a natural appearance with a smooth, unbroken line, the entire dog is scissored, leaving a short blanket of coat no longer than one inch in length following the natural outline of the dog. Here again, at the end of the tail, the hair is left at full length. This is an improperly groomed working retriever clip. The hair has been left too long on the body. On the correct working retriever clip, the coat is left no longer than one inch in length. On the left, is an example of a properly groomed lion clip. On the right is a properly groomed working retriever clip. Absolutely no preference should be given to either presentation. As for color, the Portuguese water dog may be black, white, or various tones of brown. Also correct are combinations of black or brown with white. A white coat does not imply albinism, provided nose, mouth, and eyelids are black. In animals with black, white, 
or black and white coats, the skin is decidedly bluish. Movement is the ultimate test of any dog's correct structure and balance. The Portuguese water dog's walk should be lively with short, springy steps. At a trot, you should see forward striding, well-balanced movement. There should be strong thrust from the rear being transmitted through the back to a forward reaching front. See how proudly the dog's head is carried. The tail is curled in its distinctive ring. What about this dog's movement? It's not balanced, and he is overreaching. Coming toward you, the forelegs should remain parallel, converging slightly toward a center line of gravity as speed increases. Good rear movement is characterized by rear legs strong and straight, with hocks turning neither in nor out. The rear legs will also converge slightly. This dog is moving too close behind, which is undesirable. A correctly proportioned dog like this one should give an impression of effortless movement. Now a word about height and weight. Dogs should measure between 20 and 23 inches at the withers. Bitches between 17 and 21 inches. As for weight, dogs in condition will be between 42 and 60 pounds, with bitches between 35 and 50 pounds. Height and weight should always be considered in relation to the overall structure of the animal. As you judge this breed, remember the importance of hands-on examination. Use your hands to accurately determine the correct contour of the head.